let's get started. As you can see, I've got most of the EP5 uh, jets already uh, set out on the, uh, the boardroom table here, and I have one other one still in the box that I'm going to unpackage right now. Um, this is the uh, experimental yellow uh, McGinnis EP5. Uh, never actually went into service because uh, uh, apparently no one really liked it, but uh, it's really cool anyways. So let's unbox this uh, locomotive. First off, take off the lid. That over there, and as you can see, right off the top of the bat, we've got our instruction manual, which looks like it was actually taken out of an EP5. Nice and worn out. Of course, you've got all your operating instructions, a bit of prototype information, uh, stuff like that. Always a good read uh, for every uh, repeat of locomotive. Got your exploded parts diagram. All the different bits and bobs, as we like to say. Jason makes fun of me about that one, by the way. There's the top foam. And finally, there's the locomotive in the uh, sleeve and clamshell. You just slide that out. Put that on the side. Now that just pops open there. At the top. Get some foam bits to keep everything in place. And there we go. Put this right over here. And just the base of the box, of course, with a couple extra detail parts. We'll put that aside. Nice and simple with the, uh, with the box there. In terms of the prototype history, these were delivered in 1955 by General Electric to, to the New Haven. Uh, they quickly became known as kind of an iconic uh, engine for the, uh, for the New Haven, uh, running between New York's uh, Grand Central Terminal uh, up along their uh, electrified territory up the coast. Now, I won't get too much into the prototype uh, specific information. Uh, if you want to have a look at that, uh, please click on our uh, previous video that we did, uh, I guess a little over a year ago now for some more information. But uh, let's dive right into the to the models. Of course, right off the top, we've got the experimental yellow uh, EP5 as, uh, as I unboxed just a moment ago. Um, they didn't like the colors, so that quickly gave way to the more standard um, New Haven McGinnis uh, orange as uh, was the most popular, well, most well-known paint scheme on these engines. And later on, of course, these engines went to Penn Central uh, for, uh, for a time in the uh, late 60s until uh, the late 70s. So that's a quick overview of the, uh, of the engines. Uh, why don't uh, I fire up the uh, 377 here, and we'll give you a quick overview of all the sounds and operating functions, including the really neat operating pantographs. So uh, we'll just fire up the engine on function 8. It goes through its whole sequence. Pantograph automatically goes up. You can hear that uh, crackling of the uh, power as it uh, connects to the overhead catenary. And there's that signature jet sound as the, uh, the engine comes to life. Let's turn on the headlight. That is on engine zero. We've got the bell. Of course, we've got the other signature New Haven uh, detail, the Hancock air whistle. And we'll get rolling. Let's give it a little power. You can hear that jet kind of scream as it uh, starts to travel down the track. If you slow to a stop there, you can hear the brake squeal. Now as we change direction, the pantographs actually change, uh, change ends. So if we change the direction on DCC here, that will start up the sequence. Yep, the first one raises, the other one lowers down, 
and we're ready to go in the opposite direction. Now this function is only available on uh, DCC. Now if you uh, also want that, that can be turned off. There is a button on the bottom of the engine where you can shut off the, uh, the pantograph mechanism if you want to keep it in the lowered position. Once again, let's get it moving down the track in the opposite direction. And we're off. And once again with that sequence of uh, changing directions. Very cool. That's a quick look at our HO scale EP5.